I think she doesn't need any introduction because we call her the Wonder Woman of Tamil Nadu Ophthalmic Society. And she's also the success behind the man who's standing for the next scientific committee chairman, Dr. Mohan Rajan here. So I request all your support. So the madam will be talking on small pupils and hard cataracts. So hard cataract itself is a challenge and then having a small pupil on top of it doubles Inci the incidentally challenge. Incidentally, she is my only wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just yeah. want to tell you. Yeah. So she'll have Officially. some beautiful videos. So uh, off to you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, Nivian. Thank you for in, uh, inviting me to be participate in the course and thanks the organizers for this wonderful opportunity. So my talk is on management of um, a small pupil with hard cataracts. So management of small pupil itself is very difficult and most of us have uh, put them probably as the last in the uh, list of uh, the OT list. And when it's associated with the heart cataract with its inherent difficulties, I think we have to really make a lot of plans. So there are many causes of uh, small pupils. The commonest in the Southeast Asian population is advanced age and pseudo exfoliation. And, so that, and also advanced nuclear sclerosis. Use of anti-prostate agents have to be also considered. So you have to stop myotics with the patients on myotics, use long-standing myotics, and prepare the patient well, use a peribulbar or a subtenons block because the patient is going to, the patient is going to have, uh, maybe having a little bit more pain than in a normal surgery. So high-density viscoelastic to protect the endothelium because of the prolonged phaco time and also using a pupil expanding devices. So these are challenging situations that you see this uh, patient with a heart cataract um, and a very small pupil. It's not playing. Anyway, I think it should play later. So it's a very small pupil. This was this patient is uh, I did about 15 years back. Was a headmaster and he was um, um, he was my optometrist headmaster, and so he was standing close to me and watching. And these patients are very difficult to handle, and to give them good results is always challenging. The other causes could be persistent pupillary membrane fibrous pupillary membrane, which again uh, uh, can have problems along with um, heart cataracts. So the management of uh, heart cataracts, small pupil, would be using pupil stretching techniques. It could be iris hooks, pupil expansion rings. I'm getting it's flickering. Pupil expansion rings, using intracameral adrenaline if the pupil becomes myotic, and using high-density viscoelastic. So this is uh, one of my patients. You can see the pseudo-exfoliation heart cataract, and patient is also on Urimax, so I decided to go ahead and do uh, iris hooks for this patient. And uh, the cataract is quite hard, it's about grade four. I'm using a high density viscoelastic. I normally prefer to use uh, viscoat, uh, no financial interest, and uh, uh, use, I uh, use four uh, uh, iris hooks. There are people who like to use five, but I'm quite comfortable with four. You make a, a nice square pupil. Once you get the square pupil, then you are all set to go because then the next thing that you have to handle is only a heart cataract and your plan will succeed if you do it very slowly and diligently. So make a good tunnel and paint the surface with, um, paint the surface again, it's again gone off. With a, uh, with a trepan blue and I prefer to do a needle rexis and do a large rexis, which is slightly larger than the normal rexis, say about 5.5 millimeters, so that the, the, the pressure on the bag is much less because these uh, uh, cataracts fill up the whole bag. And again, multiple quadrant hydro dissection is the key because you, you, you do, cannot do a complete hydro dissection as you would normally do because you can produce a posterior capsule rupture. So do a multiple quadrant and then decompress every time. I would like to make a small trench in the center and then use an uh, anterior chopping technique. Here I'm using a high phaco power and multiple level chopping. You keep on chopping. I'm using a sharp chopper. And this sharp chopper can actually cleave. It's about 1.75 millimeters. You can actually go into the uh, substance of the uh, cataract and cleave very nicely. It was developed by Dr. Mohan Rajan. So once you've done multiple levels of chopping, Stop this. Can you get this? It's okay. 
So once we have, I, I prefer to chop all round, make them into small, small quadrants before starting to uh, uh, eat them up, emulsify them. So uh, th there are some people who would like to chop, eat one piece and so on, but I prefer to do this because then it gives us good resistance while chopping. So it allows you to chop very nicely in the bag. And make sure that when you're doing these cataracts that you, you keep your phaco probe in the iris plane. Don't go do an anterior chamber phaco because you can then produce a lot of damage to the endothelium. So at the end of the day, that's also equally important. And once that is done, do a, a cortical aspiration removal. So once you have a nice round pupil, it becomes very simple and easy. And then inject the lens. Once you've injected the lens, the iris hooks have to come out because you can't remove the iris hooks when there's no viscoelastic. There should be at least some infusion if you're trying to remove the, just to keep the anterior chamber stable. And once the iris hooks comes off, you remove the viscoelastic and the case is done. So well, you should mentally prepare yourself very well if you're planning a case like this because you know that it's going to take a longer time and prepare the, your OT staff as well. So I just want to show you a similar case, which is also a hard cataract, white pupil, but in this case, I have not used any uh, pupil expanding. What I mean to say is if you're doing an anterior chopping, you don't really need to use any pupil expanders. In, in, the, in this patient, is a, the pupil size is about 4.5 millimeters. So I'm doing a, a slightly larger rexus and I'm doing multiple quadrant hydro dissection, very similar to what I've done. After every hydro dissection, I just burp the incision a little bit so that I make sure that the fluid flows around, put high density viscoelastic to coat the endothelium, and the technique is almost the same. So I do a central trench, rotate, and then chop. I use a sharp chopper, you can see the sharp chopper, and see everything, both the instrument as well as the probe are, in, in, uh, you can see it, you, you don't have to go behind. In peripheral chopping, you go behind and then you can tend to, uh, uh, you can uh, nip off the posterior capsule or uh, the anterior capsule, whereas everything is in the front, the anterior chopping or the vertical chopping in that way works very well. And this again is a very hard cataract. You can see a central nucleus core and once that is removed, you use a uh, hyperpulse technology. This is again a very important aspect. When you use a hyperpulse technology, or cold FACO technology, the advantage is the amount of FACO, the on and the off time is, uh, the on time is reduced, and so the amount of FACO power which is delivered into the eye is reduced, and uh, the amount of energy which is dissipated is also reduced, thereby the damage to the intraocular structures, particularly the endothelium is very much reduced, but at the same time, the effective nature of the uh, phaco emulsification does not go down. So when you're removing the nucleus disassembly, switch over to a, um, a pulse phaco, which is available in almost all the newer generation machines. So this, you can see at the end of the case, the pupil is remaining the same size, which goes to show the phaco dynamics has been excellent. There's very minimal handling of the iris. So the, the pupil is not, size has not gone down. That's a great advantage if you use the right technique. And then you just go ahead and uh, do an IA and put the lens inside. So now I'm coming to this complicated cataract which I showed you. So in this case, it was done about 10, 15 years back. I'm using a pupil stretching techniques even before the iris hooks came in. And we still do it occasionally if you're caught unawares. And the only thing is when you're stretching the pupil, it's better to avoid the, the angle towards the incision like what I'm doing now because then the iris becomes very floppy close to the incision and every time you enter it will present yourself, uh, present it to the probe and you can get, uh, you can catch the iris inadvertently. So the pupil size is around three to four millimeters in this case and you direct the probe towards deep down. Don't, don't direct the probe at the same level as the iris because then you're going to catch hold of the iris. You go deep down so that when you chop, whatever you do, you keep your instruments in the front where you can see in the anterior aspect and uh, do a very slow, slow motion phaco, making sure that all the, see at no point of time it's an anterior chamber phaco. You can see that it is in the iris plane and it is nowhere near the uh, iris. So the, in, in particularly in a venturi system, the advantage is you can, the, it just comes towards you, the, the nucleus bits comes towards you. And once it is done, you can uh, put the lens inside without producing any damage to the endothelium or to the uh, iris, and the case went off well. 
So this uh, uh, patient with a heart cataract, I'm using a Mulugan's ring. The advantage with this ring is that it is uh, definitely more atraumatic when compared to uh, the iris hook. So it's important that you put some viscoelastic under the iris so that you give space for the uh, Mulugan ring to uh, sit down. It's made of polypropylene and it's got uh, multiple scrolls. It comes preloaded and you, it's, it's something like a safety pin which gets the scrolls get catch hold of the iris and allows the pupil to dilate. Sometimes you may not be, some, most of the times you'll be able to make sure that the scrolls get fit into the iris but sometimes if you don't do, you don't have to really worry because you can very easily adjust them and then you can make them uh, catch the iris very gently. So, so you can see that the scroll is not come out and so I'm just tucking it in and then you have a nice round iris and this is, the pupil size is really large, you have about a seven millimeter pupil and then it becomes a whole, uh, the surgery becomes very easy. The only disadvantage I would say is I would use Malugan ring for all the patients but for the fact it's a little bit expensive and most of our patients cannot afford it. So we tend to use iris hooks. <clears throat> and once this is done, see you, now you can see that I'm chopping. The cataract is not very hard. It's about maybe grade four. It's not as hard as the previous cataracts. As there, there are some leathery fibers, but so it, at this stage, using I in, in a case of a hard, very hard cataract, I don't, I don't use pulse phaco. But once you've disassembled, made it the nuclear bits, then you can go ahead and use a pulse phaco then to remove the nuclear bits so that the amount of energy is very less. And um, following this, um, IA is done, the cortical aspiration, and then the lens is injected. And before removing the IA, the uh, Malugan's ring is uh, removed. It can be very gently disengaged. And using the same loader, it can be beautifully removed. And they have a newer version which can actually go through a side port as well as we removed through a side port. It's got something like a clip which you can just pull it and bring it out. So the last uh, video that I'm going to show is the BHEX pupil expander, which, um, which is actually an Indian product. It's a very simple design. It has got multiple tabs and flanges to hold the iris. It is very thin when compared to uh, Malugan's ring. It's only 0.75 millimeters, and extremely flexible. And it gives you the adequate pupil size to do any cataract surgery. It can, um, you, can, you can use BX forceps to insert it. It can be inserted through a side port. So these are some of the advantages of BX pupil expander when compared to a Malugan's ring. And um, so you, you insert this and tuck in all the flanges one by one under the iris. Then you get a very nice, it's quite simple to do. Like I said, so flexible and so easy. It can be done very easily. And you get a nice round pupil, a hexagonal pupil for you to go ahead and uh, do your phaco emulsification. And the size is approximately about six millimeters. The cataract is quite hard. You don't have to worry about that. So because this can be inserted even through a side port, the advantage is that you can have a, uh, you don't have to expand the incision for anything. And once it is done, it can be uh, gently disengaged and remove either through the side port or through the main port. <coughs> so um, I think with these, um, I don't want to overshoot my time. The, again, this is a mature, mature cataract I wanted to show you. It's a very small pupil, but still I've managed to do it without using any pupil expanders because just by using adequate visco adaptives, like using a, 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 heel on, a heel on to expand the pupil or um, a, a viscoat, you can continue to do your phaco without uh, uh, using any pupil expanders. In these cases, you have to decrease the fluidics, do an anterior chopping, keep your instruments in the center, but make sure your surgical level, skill level is, should be high. So the other intracambral uh, yeah, intra yeah. midriatics that are available are one percent epinephrine. The omidria is available in the U.S. And um, so just to, uh, the most important thing I would say, say is anterior capsular staining is very important, you know, dealing with heart cataracts and high, good hydrodissection, nucleus management as we have uh, discussed, and 
using all this, we can, the challenges with small pupil and hard cataracts can be overcome with proper mental preparation by the surgeon and a few simple tricks. Thank you. Thank you, Nibian, for yeah, giving me you, this opportunity. Uh, I think one take home message that I took five years back is uh, when you have these hard cataracts, if you see her videos, most of the time she does it without the hooks. That is, de she debulks the central nucleus and then cracking can be initiated because then you have to crack only the periphery that is remaining. So that makes it slightly easier and less stress on the zonules and you can complete the cases even without using any of these expanders, however tough they are. Thank you. Uh, I think it was a beautiful presentation by Sujata. The most important problem in phaco emulsification is not the hard cataract or the subluxated cataract or the posterior polar cataract. It is a small pupil. Please understand this very, very clearly. Small pupil is a very big problem and a small pupil will tackle it right in the beginning. Okay. When you, before you start the surgery, before you make the capsular excess, you make sure that this people is going to come down on you. So it is important that you put a iris hooks right in the beginning or malignant ring, whatever you are comfortable or a pupil stretching or a BX ring, whatever you are, but make sure that the pupil is dilated because if you don't dilate the pupil and the pupil is going to come down on you, then all the complications can occur like zonal dialysis, PC rupture, iris dialysis, iris tears and all these uh, rixis tears and all these problems can occur. I think this is a very important take home message I want to give you all that small pupil is a big problem and once you make, if you don't see well, you don't operate well, okay? That is the main thing. So you need to see well during the surgery and unless you expand the pupil, you will not be able to see well. So over